Hi, this is Tamara from MoogliBlog.com, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make the Chevron Lace Infinity Scarf, which is a free pattern that you can find the full directions for on MoogliBlog.com. Now this is the original, I have it all folded up here. Let me see if I can unfold it a bit. You can see it's an infinity, one large loop. This one is made with, and you'll have to forgive me for the pronunciation here, uh, Schockenmeyer Regi Regia Stripe Mania Color. Difficult to say, but very pretty. I got this one. This was courtesy of Paradise Fibers. You can find them online. This was the original. As you can see, it's a self-striping yarn, which was really fun with this pattern. No color changes. I was able to work all the way around, and then we'll see if I can find the seam here. Fortunately, it's a little more difficult to find. There we go. You can see it's worked end to end, and then the ends are just whip stitched together. So if you wanted a two-ended scarf, this pattern is great for that too. Now to demonstrate this pattern today, I'm going to use Red Hearts with Love. It's a little bit, uh, actually quite a bit thicker. Uh, the other one, the original was made with a DK. This is an Aran weight. Um, but the great thing about a scarf pattern is you can change the yarn weight and just change the look without necessarily changing the functionality of the garment. If you make as many rows, of course, it's going to be longer with a thicker yarn, but that's the fun of scarves, I think, that you can really play with the yarn weight and make something new and different. So let's get started. Now this pattern begins with two possible beginnings. You could start with a chain of 42 and single crochet 41, skipping that first chain, or you can do what I've done here, which is foundation single crochet 41 stitches. Since it's in Aran, it's quite wide that will shrink up here as we begin our chevron too. So let me reinsert my hook. Now the original was made with an H hook because it's a DK weight yarn. Here with this Aran weight I'm using a J. Um, I could probably go even bigger to a K or an L if I were planning on finishing the scarf with this yarn. Now I will go ahead and begin, this is row one here, the foundation single crochets, and then I'll begin row two. And in fact in this pattern it's a two row repeat, row two and row three. So first we'll start with row two. I'm going to chain four and turn to work back across the foundation stitches here. This chain four counts as a chain three, or excuse me, it counts as a double crochet in chain one. So I'm going to, going to double crochet right in that first stitch. Sort of like we're making a V stitch here like a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Then I'm going to chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and then do that twice more here. Chain one, skip one, double crochet, chain one, skip one, double crochet, and then let me look at the chart here. Again, I recommend you go to mooglyblog.com for the full pattern. There is a chart for this. So I've got that first V. I've got my three double crochets with spaces in between. So it's time to chain one, and then I'm going to work a wide double crochet two together. So I'm going to yarn over, skip a stitch, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, and then I am going to skip the next three stitches, one, two, three, and finish the double crochet in that fourth stitch. Finish the double crochet two together, I should say. So when I've got three loops left on the hook, I yarn over and pull through all three to finish that. All right, then I am going to chain one, skip one, and double crochet three more times. I tend to think of this as heading back up the hill. When we make a decrease, we create a valley, then we have to work back up the hill towards an increase. That is the basic idea between, or the basic idea of pretty much any chevron pattern. And as you'll notice, I'm skipping a stitch in between two here. Anytime I chain one here, I skip one. So we've got our three double crochets heading back up the hill. So we're going to chain one and do our increase. So we skip one, and then in the next stitch, we're going to work a double crochet chain three, there we are, double crochet, chain three, and then double crochet in that same stitch. 
So that's how we keep a chevron even. When we decrease, we decrease skipping three. When we increase, it's kind of like we're adding three there. You can see the chevron is starting to shape up already. So now it's time to head back down the hill of our chevron. We're going to chain one, skip one, and double crochet three times. One, chain one, skip one, double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. If you're not familiar with chains and double crochets, then you need to watch different videos for those because I'm not going over how to make the actual stitches in this one. Um, but I do have videos for those on my YouTube channel as well as on moogliblog.com, so be sure to check those out. So we've worked our way back down, and now it is time for another decrease. So we chain one, skip one, work the first half of the double crochet two together, skip three, yarn over, and do the second half, and then pull it all together. All right. Then we're going to work back up the hill, chain one, skip one, double crochet three times. Pull up a little more yarn here. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. And then at this point, we should have just two stitches left, which is what we have here. One, two. I'm going to chain one skip one, and then in the very last one, we're going to work a small V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So it's an increase sort of like we had in the middle, but it's smaller. And we've got one on each end. Let me lay out if we can pull back a little bit here and see that the pattern is already starting to take shape. We've got the decrease, the increase, the decrease, with two small increases on the ends to keep our ends straight. So that's row two. And that'll be the first row that gets repeated over and over again. So let's start with row three. To begin row three, we're going to start the same way. We're going to chain four. And that again counts as a double crochet and a chain one. We turn our work here. Then we're going to double crochet in that same first stitch to make that small increase there on the end. Then we're going to just double crochet in each stitch and each chain space until we start to approach that decrease down here. So let's go ahead and work a double crochet in that first chain one space right there. Then we double crochet in the next stitch. Then we double crochet in the next chain space. And then we double crochet in the next stitch. Then in the next chain space. And in the next stitch. And we're going to keep going like this until we get to the chain space right before the previous decrease. So double crochet in the chain space. Pull up a little more yarn here. Double crochet in the next stitch. And then if I look at the previous row, I can see that at this point we've come back to that decrease. So we've got the chain space, decrease, chain space of the previous row. So what we're going to do at this point is pull this stitch back out. I've actually gone one too far. Because we want to make our next decrease using the stitches on either side of the decrease of the previous row. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to yarn over. Start the first decrease, the first half of the decrease here. The double crochet two together in that stitch. Then I'm going to skip that chain space. I'm going to skip the decrease. I'm going to skip the next chain space. Yarn over and put it in the next stitch over right there. Okay. And that's how the decrease lines up on top for row two, row three. All right. Then I am going to start working into each chain space and stitch again until I approach that increase in the middle. And remember you can work right in that chain space. You don't have to worry about going into 
that chain, you just go right down into that chain space and work all the way around those stitches. Much, much easier. So you can see here, we're coming up to that increase from the previous row, the double crochet, chain three, double crochet. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and work in the first double crochet of that wide V there. Then we're going to double crochet in again into that chain three space. Then we're going to work a wide V stitch into the double crochet, the chain three space. So that's a double crochet, chain three, one, two, three, and double crochet. Okay, then another double crochet in that chain three space. So within that chain three space, this was row two, we have the chain three space. So when we work row three, we work a double crochet the wide V stitch there, double crochet, chain three, double crochet, and another double crochet. Then it's time to start working our way back down that hill towards a decrease again. So we're going to work into each stitch and each chain space on our way back down. As we approach the decrease, once again, we're going to work the decrease, working the two halves into the double crochets on either side of the previous rows decrease. That's how I think of it anyway. So here we are. We've come back to the next decrease. We've got our double crochet two together. So we're going to start decreasing in the double crochet right before it. Stop with two loops left on the hook. Yarn over. Go to the double crochet that's on the other side and finish the decrease there. Okay, so you can see those have lined up again. Then it's back into the chain spaces and the double crochets. Until we get back up to the end here. Now if you want written out instructions as well as a crochet symbol chart, again, please go to mooglyblog.com to get the free video, or the free pattern I should say, and the video, and the chart, and all the other good things. Now here we are back here. Remember, we began round two with a chain four and double crochet, and that's sort of acting like a V stitch, a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So what we're going to do is work a double crochet in that double crochet, a double crochet in that chain one space, what we're calling a chain one space, and then we're going to work another small V stitch into that third chain. So we want to count one, two, three, and here it's the bottom loop that's sort of sticking out, so I'm actually going to use my hook to hook into it and stick it through that way. I find it's a little easier. Then I'm going to do a chain, a double crochet, chain one, double crochet right in that chain three, the top of the chain three, the third chain, whatever you want to call it. And that's it for row three. So from there you just repeat row two, row three, row two, row three, until basically you've got the length you desired. Um, I do have row counts and all that in the written pattern, but especially if you're uh, changing the yarn weight, you'll want to basically work the yarn, the uh, scarf to be as long as you want it. And then of course you can whip stitch the end together. I do have a separate video tutorial for whip stitching if you need that. But you can see here, let me kind of pull one layer out so you can see it. We've got the, the row two, followed by a row three, a row two, a row three. And I know that these seem a lot closer, and as you work more rows of chevron, it tends to pull in a little bit too. But with those small increases on the sides, we get nice straight sides. And then, of course, you can make the chevron lace infinity scarf. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more awesome crochet videos from mooglyblog.com.